I think we are back on uh, sorry there was a there was a power failure and uh, because of that uh, you know my video got disconnected so I'll just wait for a uh, you know, few more minutes before we uh, you know, get started. I think uh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, there was a power failure uh, and because of that, like my video got disconnected. Uh, but uh, uh, I'll just wait for a couple of more minutes. Uh, I'll let uh, you know, other people join back and then uh, I think we can get uh, started. Uh, in the meantime, uh, you know, let me give you a quick uh, background about uh, you know, what Pick My Nature is all about and uh, uh, you know what we are trying to do uh, so pick my nature uh, you know we are trying to create a, a community of all the wildlife enthusiasts and uh, you know naturalists who wants to work with us uh, who wants to uh, you know work as a community uh, to uh, you know to promote wildlife conservation or wildlife protection and uh, uh, you know nature conservation uh, we have been, uh, you know, for the past uh, around two years or so, like we have been conducting various workshops uh, in different schools, different colleges uh, and in and around our, uh, uh, you know, our societies uh, just to create the awareness about, uh, you know, why it is important to, why it is important to protect nature and, uh, you know, why uh, we should be uh, you know why we should be uh, protecting the wildlife and other natural resources now if we if we look at the urban population majority of the people uh, you know they are so busy with their corporate lives that uh, it is very very difficult for them uh, to take out time uh, or educate their uh, kids on on these topics so that's where we are helping parents uh, uh, in um, you know, in driving this message across to all the youngsters and all the uh, the kids, because uh, uh, you know we want to involve uh, younger population, millennials, as uh, uh, you know, as quickly as possible in their uh, you know in their lives, because uh, the more they learn about nature or wildlife conservation, uh, you know, soon sooner in their lives, like it will remain with them forever. Uh, so that is the reason why we want to protect them, uh, like why we want to educate them on uh, on nature and wildlife conservation uh, topics. Uh, uh, there are schools and colleges which we have uh, started reaching out to. Uh, in the past, like uh, we have conducted few workshops for a few of the orphanage homes, a few of the schools, and we are trying to, uh, you know, cover more schools and colleges in 2020. Uh, I think uh, with COVID-19 uh, scenario, there are a lot of things which have, uh, you know, the plans have uh, to be revisited now and uh, we'll see how it goes uh, after the, uh, you know, after the lock lockdown is uh, over. Uh, we'll have to rethink about all that, uh, uh, you know, how we have to do it uh, in, in the practical world. Uh, one of the ways what we are thinking of is like this is one of the uh, the mediums which we would like to uh, definitely leverage uh, Instagram, YouTube. Would like to leverage uh, uh, you know internet and social media to uh, promote the message uh, about nature and uh, wildlife conservation. Uh, having said that, uh, you know that's that's about pick my nature. Uh, now coming to photography, like how is photography linked to uh, nature uh, and wildlife? Uh, See my my primary like I I shoot uh, action uh, in wildlife uh, so basically I shoot sports and uh, and wildlife and uh, uh, you know that's the reason why I wanted to uh, make sure like if I have to involve youngsters if I have to involve kids or their parents into nature conservation and wildlife protection uh, you know nobody would uh, would be interested like till the time they are learning something uh, you know. So I had to answer that question of, uh, you know, what's in it for me? So that's the reason why we are bringing in, uh, you know, photography uh, into this. Uh, we are saying that you know, just by uh, 
uh, you know promoting uh, uh, photography or just by learning like you can you can attend some of our sessions uh, you know these sessions are free of cost like you can attend these sessions uh, you know we will be more than happy to answer all your questions uh, but at the same time like uh, we will also talk about wildlife and we'll also talk about uh, uh, you know what are the different uh, 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 you know what are the different channels through which you can uh, you can contribute uh, in nature conservation and wildlife protection uh, having said that, uh, let me take a pause here and uh, let me see like if you guys have any questions, uh, uh, more than happy. So as I mentioned, like uh, if you have any questions around Pick My Nature or if you have any questions about natural neighborhood, if you have any questions about, uh, you know, photography, uh, I will just take a pause here and see like what kind of questions are coming in and then we'll get started, you know, then we'll move to the next one. Uh, I've seen uh, you know a few more uh, people joining in. Uh, uh, we have uh, Sarika. Uh, we have Mohir. I'm sorry, like I think uh, Mohir Shad Qureshi. Uh, yeah, guys, like if you have any questions, uh, uh, you know, please uh, type type in those questions in the. Uh, in the comment box below so that I can read through those questions and uh, yeah, I'll be more than happy to answer. Okay, so I don't think, uh, uh, you know, there are any questions coming in around uh, photography or uh, regarding uh, you know pick my nature so let me quickly start with you know about the, uh, the action photography and uh, uh, you know why do I shoot action uh, so why I started uh, you know when when I was shooting uh, or when I started uh, you know, clicking pictures with my first DSLR camera like way back in 2010 2011 I uh, I didn't knew like I was just going out and clicking some pictures like I didn't know how to use it. Uh, primarily, I was shooting on uh, on auto mode. Uh, but over a period of time, like what I've realized is like uh, you know if I have to, I used to play cricket. So I started. I thought like uh, you know let me shoot some uh, some sports or let me start shooting cricket. When I started doing that, I realized that, uh, you know, my pictures were not uh, uh, crystal clear. Uh, they were blur. So that was the time, like, I thought, like, there is something, uh, you know, I'm missing. So auto mode is definitely not good. I started uh, searching on YouTube and I started, uh, you know, learning more about photography. And uh, what I realized was, like, if I have to take crisp pictures, if I have to, uh, you know, if I have to shoot sports, like, I have to make sure, like, I know how to, uh, you know, how to uh, take those crisp pictures or how to, uh, you know, change the settings on the camera or on, on the DSLR uh, to take those uh, sharper pictures. So basically, in other words, what I can say is, uh, you know, it was important for me to understand, uh, you know, what my camera is capable of. Uh, it was important for me to understand what these settings mean. Uh, what each of the functions within my camera uh, is for uh, you know what is the uh, what is the uh, the functionality of each uh, uh, you know each button or each uh, menu option which was available in my uh, in my camera so uh, you know when i started shooting uh, uh, you know cricket uh, i realized that i need because it's action like uh, it's fast uh, especially like as compared to you know football or hockey like it is not that fast because but but when when the action is on the field like you have to be quick right so you can't shoot on auto mode because even if you're trying to like you you might get few pictures which are uh, uh, you know which are clear but uh, you're just uh, relying on the camera uh, right you're not relying on your skill so if you have to uh, use the capabilities of the DSLR camera, you need to know how to use it, 
right and for using that uh, you need to understand what uh, shutter speed means or what aperture means what are the different modes like what is uh, manual mode and all so in today's uh, session uh, you know let me first start with the very very basic uh, things about the photography and then we'll uh, you know talk about all these things at a later stage uh, you know when when it comes to photography uh, i feel uh, you know there are three very important aspects uh, you know which you need to have or which you need to focus on uh, before you start investing or before you start thinking about putting in a lot of money into photography see photography uh, you know there are a lot of people like who who ask this question that okay if i which camera to buy or which lens to buy uh, but it's not about uh, trust me like it is not only about the equipment uh, i think from my personal experience i think there are three important aspects uh, you know which makes your photography uh, you know great or which makes your photographs uh, look great number one uh, is uh, uh, light right uh, if the light is not good uh, you know your pictures will not come sharp even your equipment will not work right uh, you may have heard about uh, uh, different aspects uh, of photography where like or different uh, you may have seen different uh, you know different videos where they say like uh, uh, this camera or this phone has a very good uh, uh, camera because it shoots in low light right so photography uh, you know for for me photography is all about uh, light and how you play with light what from from which direction the light is falling on the subject how you can make your subject look good uh, it all depends on how you are positioning the subject how the light is falling on the subject and how good is the light you know your camera has a built in uh, meter you know based on which it tells you that your exposure uh, or you know the picture which you're clicking is properly exposed or not right so if your camera is getting or if your camera sensor is getting uh, adequate amount of light it will be able to function appropriately and it will be able to take a picture uh, you know it will be able to take a sharper picture now so light is you know photography is all about light if you do not know how to control light you know how to increase the amount of light uh, which is going and hitting the sensor or if you are uh, you know if you have to uh, decrease the amount of light uh, you know in in certain circumstances like you have to reduce the light uh, right so uh, you want to underexpose your subject in certain instances and that's about you know your creativity how you are uh, you want to click that uh, picture or how you want to uh, you know showcase that subject so you know light is the most important thing uh, and i'm going in that chronological order so that uh, you know you can understand as i mentioned like there are three things uh, number one uh, on my priority list is light uh, if light is not good like uh, nothing will work your equipment will not work and you will not be able to take sharper images so light is the most important thing number two uh, from my perspective it is uh, uh, you know i would say the vision or your eye right how you visualize that subject uh, you know if you are able to visualize your subject in a different way or in a different manner uh, you know as compared to a common layman i think that makes your photographs look amazing you know that makes your uh, you know that makes your photographs look good so the second uh, most important thing for me in photography is i of a photographer how uh, the photographer is able to visualize things in a different manner i think that makes things uh, look uh, your or that makes your photographs look amazing right so that's the second thing what i would like to call out so number 1 as i mentioned it's light number 2 it's about your eye or your uh, uh, you know how you visualize things is the second most important thing uh, in photography 
the third thing is passion and why i'm saying passion because if you don't have passion then no matter how uh, much money you are putting in to buy uh, these expensive uh, equipments and uh, you know how much money you are putting into buy different lenses different cameras uh, and other photographic equipment like it will not be that good you know you won't be able to uh, utilize that or there will be no return on investment because after trust me like after uh, you know 5 6 months maybe after a year your if you don't have passion all that uh, stuff or all that money uh, will go down the drain right and that is the reason why i'm saying these three things number one as i mentioned uh, you know your you know number one is light number two is how you visualize or your eye uh, of a photographer and number three is your passion i think these are the three most important things uh, which makes you uh, stand tall which makes you different and which which makes your photographs look amazing right if you don't have these three things trust me how much money no matter how much money you are putting in uh, you cannot become a a good or a great photographer right and now coming to uh, you know just to talk about these three things why i uh, i chose the, these three things uh you know, there are a lot of questions like which comes to us or you know i in the field like when we are shooting wildlife or uh, uh, you know sometimes like when we are in the wildlife sanctuary like uh, we meet different folks like who, who are just starting off who are just uh, picking up the camera and you know they're so eager to talk about or they are so eager to learn about like uh, how they can buy the next uh, uh, dslr or how they can buy the new mirrorless camera which is coming out in the market Trust me, uh, you know, you have to start with the very, very, uh, you know, basic cameras. You have to start with very, very basic uh, equipment because, you know, if you don't know how to use or how to, uh, you know, what photography means, what that subject is all about if you don't know the different functionalities no matter how how much money you are putting into uh, your equipment uh, you know you won't be able to take uh, you know great pictures so and that is the reason why i'm saying uh, you know these three things are very important and you may have noticed none of the these three things uh, you know as i mentioned your uh, passion uh, your vision or your eye and light nothing of these three none of these three things are related to the technical uh, or the equipment right so in my opinion if i have to conclude this in my opinion it's not the technical uh, stuff or it's not the uh, uh, you know it's not the equipment which makes your photographs look good it's your passion it's your how you visualize things it's your creativity and it is how you're playing with light right so it's these three things makes your photographs look good or amazing so i i would definitely like to uh, you know suggest all those people who wants to get into photography or who wants to learn photography just for passion or just uh, as a hobbyist you know do not spend too much of money on on buying uh, all the fancy equipment right and trust me because i'm not associated directly with any of the uh, any of the camera manufacturers that is the reason why i'm telling you all this otherwise like no one like people who are directly associated with uh, uh, you know with the camera manufacturing companies like nikon or canon or or sony no one will tell you this Right, and that is the reason why I'm, uh, uh, you know, why I'm saying, uh, do not spend too much of money on equipment right away. Right. Now, then, why should? Now, the next question is, when do we spend? Uh, you know, uh, when do we start thinking about upskilling or not upskilling, but upgrading our equipment? You know, once you have learned about the. Uh, 
the basics of photography once you have learned about your camera uh, you know your basic functionality of your camera once you have learned about you know what the exposure triangle is then you know after a certain while like you will start feeling yourself that uh, you know now your camera is is limiting yourself it's it's limiting your creativity uh, because after a, after some time like you start taking specialized uh, photographs like you will not be clicking anything uh, like now you know when i started like i was clicking everything uh, but now i generally click only photograph or you know as i mentioned at the beginning of the uh, the session like i was only now i only click uh, you know action uh, and action would include your sports uh, and uh, uh, you know wildlife so you know these are the two things uh, which i am normally clicking now so you know when i started thinking about up upgrading my equipment uh, the only reason why i started thinking about that was you know my initial uh, dslr camera my first dslr camera was not allowing me to you know click in low light uh, right so i i tried playing with uh, you know different settings i learned i watched different uh, youtube videos and uh, i started learning about like how i can make the best use of what i have but after a while like uh, you know wildlife is you know let's say if you are in uh, in jungle like there is uh, I, I remember like i was shooting in kabini in uh, karnataka and there was a black panther uh, sighting now you can imagine like how it, it's only for a fraction of a second you know you will you will be able to uh, see that black panther and you know sometimes like it's once in a lifetime opportunity for some of the people like who are not regular uh, you know who are not visiting uh, uh, these wildlife sanctuaries on a regular basis right now you have to take a, a shot and if your if your camera or if your uh, uh, equipment is limiting yourself i think that's when you will start feeling that you know maybe uh, i need a better equipment but trust me yeah you know if you're not doing it on a professional basis or if you are not that regular uh, you know you you will not you don't have to spend that much of money uh, because the cameras the high end cameras and the lenses will cost you a bomb right uh, there are there are cameras like which can cost up to like 5 uh, 5 lakh rupees uh, 500000 uh, uh, you know rupees like which is uh too much like if you are just uh, uh if you're just clicking those pictures as a hobbyist right so so that's the reason why i'm saying uh you know first the first thing is you have to make the best use of the equipment the basic equipment because your basic equipment will teach you it will force you to learn and get the maximum out of uh the basic camera body what you have or the basic lens what you have right and after that like when you start realizing that now i'm seriously shooting one particular uh type of uh, photographs let's say if you're shooting action and if you're shooting let's say sports or if you're shooting uh, uh you know wildlife then you know you start investing into those lenses those type of lenses which are needed for uh Uh, for wildlife or for sports right then you are you will not be purchasing any camera like you will not be purchasing any lens you will be investing into camera which has a, a capability you know which has a capability of uh, taking pictures in low light conditions because in jungle uh, you know you will not have a, a proper uh, lightning uh, you might be sitting in dark or the subject or the tiger or uh, or panther will be sitting in the dark so that is the reason why you have to you know you have to start investing into those specialized equipment uh let me take a pause uh, and uh, let me see like if there are any questions uh, you guys have any please feel free to just shoot out those questions in the in the comment box below uh, before i move to the next uh, topic I'll just wait for uh, 
you know maybe one or two more minutes before you before we move to the next uh, topic uh, but first i would like to get your thoughts just would like to get some comments like and also please uh, tell me like if am i going too fast uh, or if you want me to slow down or if you want me to uh, you know cover any of the topics again uh, if you want to know any of those three things in further in in more detail please let me know so that i can talk about uh, any of those topics uh, uh you know further uh, in more detail so let me take a pause Gee, let me just go through uh, you know, some of the you know, comments. Okay. Okay, so, so if you guys, uh, uh if you guys have uh, if you don't have any questions on the topic uh, on the first topic like which i covered about the uh, the three most important things uh, uh, you know from my perspective uh, which are most critical from photography uh, point of view uh, i mentioned that uh, so if you don't have any any other questions on that like let's move on to the uh, next topic uh, so uh, the next topic which I wanted to, uh, you know, touch upon was, uh, uh, you know, about the equipment. Again, talking about, you know, lenses versus, uh, you know, the camera. Uh, you know, whether whether a, a person should be investing into, uh, you know, into the equipment or into the camera body first. Uh, let's say when they're upgrading or when they're upskilling uh, you know they want to spend uh, you know money on camera body first or whether they should be spending on on uh, uh, lenses i will be spending more time on this topic uh, tomorrow but you know just as a quick response see it all depends on the type of photography what you're doing right uh, it all depends, like from my perspective, I think lens makes a huge difference in terms of the quality of your pictures. But if you're shooting, let's say professionally, like sometimes like, uh, you know, the workflow, sometimes like uh, those shots, which could, uh, you know, let's say a fast moving subject, you might miss out a critical shot, right? And that's where like the speed uh, of clicking pictures, execution, you know, that's where the camera body comes into picture, right? So I, if I, if I'm not a professional, if I'm shooting just for, uh, you know, just to take some good pictures, I would invest into a good lens rather than uh, investing into, uh, you know, into, into a very high-end camera body. Uh, another reason uh, at this point of time, like we will talk about mirrorless versus, uh, uh, you know, DSLR uh, in maybe, uh, you know, in some time from now or maybe tomorrow if time allows, we will do that tomorrow. Uh, but I just wanted to uh, make sure that, like, you know, the camera body comes in later. Like uh, we, we do not, like if you're not shooting professionally, then I would recommend like just spend time on uh, on the on the lens and uh, you know when it comes to 
uh, camera body like there are so many different types of bodies which are available in the market like uh, uh, you know depending on what you shoot you can pick uh, a DSLR or a, or a mirrorless uh, mirrorless is more compact but then there are other things uh, mirrorless is a uh, is a much newer technology as compared to the DSLRs so that is the reason why it is uh, you know from professional standpoint like uh, uh, we are still waiting for some of those high-end DSLRs to come out in the market but uh, you know uh, I think people who are using high-end DSLRs like it will take some time for them to move away from those high-end equipment which they have already invested in uh, maybe it will be a gradual shift uh, and uh, you know so for for you like if you have to buy a new I would still recommend like just stick to the camera body which you have and maybe at a later stage uh, you know just wait for I would say another six to eight months uh, uh, when the new camera or the new mirrorless bodies uh, with more advanced features and with some of the basic things which were missing in the in the existing or in the new launches from Nikon and Canon like once those things are addressed or those things are fixed uh, I think they will be launching uh, you know some new camera uh, some new mirrorless camera bodies uh, in six to eight months time so just wait for those camera bodies uh, you know if you have to invest into a new camera body right. okay. uh, just moving on to the to the next uh, uh, you know topic I also wanted to uh, you know touch upon the nature uh, uh, but I would keep some uh, uh, you know some time for tomorrow's session on nature conservation and wildlife protection why it is important uh, but I don't want to spend uh, you know, that much of time right now on that so let me cover some basics uh, about uh, the photography I know like we are just left with another 15 minutes or so uh, we'll, we'll kick start the basics of photography in today's session and then we will continue uh, to cover those in tomorrow's session right so as I mentioned like uh, you know the three uh, prior you know three critical things for photography similarly like if we talk about from technical stuff in photography uh, you know it's all about controlling light right? light is the most important thing uh, what uh, makes your photographs look great or uh, you know it makes your photographs look sharper right so you know we have to control light Right. to make our photographs look great or to make our photographs uh, uh, look sharper we have to control the amount of light which is coming and falling on the subject or which is getting reflected from from the subject onto the sensor right and why is that so uh, because if your picture is underexposed uh, you will not uh, you know or the followers or the people who are seeing your pictures they will not appreciate that uh, you know they you, you will not get a very good response uh, uh, so you your your photographs have to look good so that means like they have to be properly exposed now if your photograph is overexposed uh, you know you'll see too much of light falling on the subject and uh, you know the detailing of uh, uh, the subject or the details will not be there and you will not be able to see the uh, the detailing of the subject and uh, again you know people will not appreciate that and especially like if you're shooting on a professional basis like uh, you know if you're getting paid for it uh, you know your clients will not pay you uh, if your pictures are underexposed or overexposed okay and if the details are not there like sometimes like uh, uh, you know there are I know lot of photographers like who like to underexpose their pictures uh, maybe one stop uh, or maybe uh, half a stop uh, but you know if your picture is completely underexposed like you will not be able to see any details so that is the reason why you know you have to understand uh, or you have to make sure like you know how to control uh, the light uh, which is falling on your subject because you know, so you have to master so photography is all about mastering how to control light and how uh, 
you know how much light should fall on the sensor and it all depends on how the you know it all depends on your creativity it all depends on uh, you know how you are visualizing your uh, your subject or how you're visualizing uh, your your pictures uh, to uh, to look like right so uh, the first thing what in the camera uh, you know what what helps you control uh, the amount of light is your shutter right so if if you let me pick up my camera and show it to you right so how quickly the i don't know if you're able to see this but uh, right can you hear the sound similarly like if you see inside the lens how quickly the shutter is closing uh, you know that allows you and your camera uh, to so basically that uh, that allows the amount of light or that uh, allows uh, you know how much light should be falling on your sensor like if the shutter is closing very quickly uh, that means less uh, amount of light will be passing through uh, to your through your uh, aperture and hitting your sensor right uh, similarly so that means like if you have if you want more light you have to slow down uh, you know you have to bring down the shutter speed if you have to uh, you know if your subject is let's let's say it is underexposed like the light the amount of light which is falling on your subject is less then you have to slow down the shutter speed so the shutter should close slowly right so that the amount of light uh, which is passing through your lens and hitting the sensor is more like we are giving more basically by slowing down the shutter we are allowing more time for the light to pass through your lens and hit the sensor right so so that is the first way how we have to control the light now the second thing in photography like through which we can control light is uh, the second way uh, you know or the second method through which you can control light is uh, uh, you know your aperture so aperture is nothing but uh, uh, you know the you know it's it's the size of the hole through which the light is passing right so if you'll see the cam if you'll see the uh, you know if you'll see the let me pick it up again once again so if you see you know there is a there there is a you know there's a hole in the in the lens through which the light is passing and hitting the sensor the aperture it's the size of that hole right and uh, you know let me see if i can show you if you're able to see this or not but if you have the uh, a DSLR like I would recommend you know just try using uh, this right just try using the, the just try using and seeing inside the lens and uh, you know try to change the aperture uh, and I'll tell you like how to show uh, or how to change the aperture but but just to let you know like aperture is the size of the hole uh, and the more uh, you know don't get confused with the numbering system here uh, the smaller the aperture number the bigger the the size of the hole right so f 1.8 is the biggest like the lens which i'm using right now it's a 50 mm 1.8 lens a very very basic lens uh, i think uh, we call it nifty 50 but you know it's a very very basic lens but it's it has a a minimum aperture size of 1.8 so the the biggest uh, aperture hole will be at 1.8 if i if i move it from 1.8 to let's say uh, f10 uh, you know the size of the aperture uh, closes down right it it becomes smaller if i click at f22 you know the aperture size will be 
even smaller even more smaller as compared to f10 right so that's the other way how you can actually control the light right so aperture the first one was the shutter speed uh, you know how slowly the shutter is closing down it controls the light the second thing is you are uh, you know how big is the aperture uh, you know at, at what you're clicking your pictures uh, you know if the subject is underexposed you can increase the size of the aperture and if the subject is overexposed you can you know uh, you can slow or you can uh, you know reduce the size of the aperture side uh, aperture uh, of your lens and keep one thing in mind as i mentioned like uh, the number the the bigger the aperture hole or the bigger the aperture is the smaller the number is so f1.8 has the has the biggest uh, aperture hole in this lens which i'm currently using and f22 is the smallest aperture hole uh, you know it's the smallest size of the aperture uh, which is available uh, in this lens right now right so so just keep these two things uh, in mind uh, so i covered the aperture and I covered the uh, the second piece, uh, uh, you know, which was your shutter speed. Now the third important aspect or the third important piece uh, in photography uh, through which we can control light is ISO. It is the uh, ISO is basically your sensor sensitivity, like how sensitive your camera sensor is to to the light how sensitive your camera sensor is how quickly it is absorbing light or how sensitive it is to the light uh, you know that's again uh, is another aspect through which we can control uh, you know light so as i mentioned like three things three technical things which makes your photography or you know which allows you to control light uh, is shutter speed aperture and iso and these are the three and why i said like these are the three most important things when it comes to the technical aspects of photography why because it you know remember like the first at the start of the session like i talked about those three things which are required for you to be a uh, you know you to be a great photographer or you to be a good photographer that was you know your passion your eye and the light so light was the first thing which i mentioned and photography is all about light how you control light and in order to control light you need to know these three uh, you know technical technical aspects that is your aperture your shutter speed and your iso and these three things makes uh, you know we call it an exposure triangle we have a iso we have a uh, you know we have a shutter speed and we have a uh, we have a aperture size so these are the three things which makes your uh, exposure of your subject uh, proper by you know sometimes like we have to uh, you know we have to play with these three you know photography is all about playing with these three things you have to properly expose your pictures and for properly exposing your pictures you need to either control your shutter speed or you have to control your uh, you know you have to control the uh, the aperture size or you have to if you don't have if you can't change these two then you have to uh, you know you have to change iso iso generally most of the time you know we we have to keep iso at the bare minimum that is we have to keep iso at minimum that is if it is 100 keep it at 100 the basic value if your camera allows to keep it at 100 or 200 just whatever the the bare minimum uh, value is possible in a camera just keep the iso at that so in my camera i generally start with 100 
if there is anything which is more like if i'm not able to in low light conditions if i have to if i have to uh you know if i'm not able to reduce uh, the aperture uh, value uh, or i am not able to uh, reduce uh, let's say the shutter speed uh, the only other options which is available with me is to bump up the iso there are other ways as well like i can play with my exposure value my ev uh, as well but uh, you know these are the three basic we will talk about uh, exposure value maybe at a later stage but iso aperture and the uh, uh, shutter speed like these are the three basic things which all of us should know and master uh, to be a good photographer let me uh, end today's uh, uh, tutorial or today's uh, uh, session here and uh, I will wait for you guys. I'll wait for your comments. I'll wait for uh, you know any recommendations, any suggestions from you guys. Uh, if you if you have any, please put that. Uh, please post that uh, on my Insta page uh, so that uh, you know I can I can try to address that. Uh, I'll in, try to incorporate that feedback in tomorrow's session and uh, many more sessions uh, which I'll be taking in the near future. Right. So I know like we will be uh, dropping off exactly in uh, uh, two to three minutes time. So I just want to say thank you for uh, joining uh, my Insta session. Uh, and you know, if you want me to cover any specific topics, please put that in your comments uh, and stay safe uh, and uh, just take care of yourself and your families and uh, i'll speak to you guys tomorrow okay thank you and bye bye